You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hi there and welcome back to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. Today is a very, very special episode because in this episode, I am interviewing my favorite childhood hero artist, Mark Kistler. Now, if you are thinking, hmm, that name sounds familiar. Well, back in the early 80s, in the 90s, Mark Kistler used to do a lot of drawing videos. He has about 20 books and he had a show on PBS and other channels there for a while called Secret Cities. And then later on, it became Imagination Station. I have one of the books here. This is from Draw Squad. You might've been part of Draw Squad if you sent in a drawing like I did when I was a kid. I actually sent in a drawing to Secret Cities uh, with Mark Kistler. It was a helicopter. I copied the show and I drew it. I used to do this all the time, um, the drawing parts. But then one time I drew this helicopter, these two little feet sticking out at the top and I sent that in. I am so inspired by Mark and I'm so excited and honored to have gotten to interview him and share some of the ideas or allow him to share some of his thoughts and insights to you guys. Um, he has a lot of great tips for teachers in terms of teaching art to kids and inspiring them. And also he's gonna give some insight into his brand new documentary that has just come out, which you can check out on Amazon Prime or Apple TV. And for a short time, it's gonna be on Tubi as well, T-U-B-I. Um, and that is called The Secret Cities of Mark Kistler. And that is why he's out on my show. I'm so pumped, I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, this is Mark Kistler and this is his Draw Squad book from back in the day. And I still draw so many things like my eyes, my foreshortened squares, all in the same way. So just here, you can see this old style milk carton where I have the four dots. You, well, he drew the four dots and then you bring down the lines, make this line shorter or longer and these two shorter, and then you connect them and that makes some perspective. I love Mark Kistler's style of drawing. It was a huge reason why I became, became an art teacher, became an artist, and I have my own YouTube channel teaching kids how to draw and that's totally inspired by Mark. I'm so excited to dive in on this interview and I would love for you to join and watch Secret Cities documentary, The Secret Cities of Mark Kistler on either Apple TV, Amazon Prime or TV. Check it out, it's so impactful, inspiring and it tells this whole story of Mark Kistler's journey from when he started out drawing and then getting his own show 18, 19 and then as through the years, um, following him through his journey and how it evolved and then where he is today. So we'll be diving in and interviewing him. So stay tuned and let's dive in on this podcast episode with my honored guest, Mark Kistler. All right. Welcome, Mr. Mark Kistler. I'm so excited you're here. I was one of your young fans in the 90s and I feel really honored to talk to you because you inspired me and a lot of the way I even draw today. Um, as we were talking earlier, I still draw foreshortened uh, squares in the, the same way with the four dots and I bring down the lines. And I just remember that you were so engaging and I remember being glued to the TV. You created a monumental impact in my life and I think that that is still why I really love to draw cartoons today, even as an adult, even teaching as Ms. Artastic. So it really um, has brought a lot. I just, I have to be honest, I was just so excited seeing your name in my inbox. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> so, so for me, it's again, a truly a fully, a full circle moment. So without further delay, uh, welcome to the podcast, Mr. Mark Kistler. Yay. <laughs> yeah. um, I am, uh, uh, zooming with you right now from uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, where I'm yeah. conducting uh, my week long uh, summer art camp. I've been coming back here for 30 years. Wow. To, well, 23, 25, I don't know, somewhere between 23 and 30. Missed a few years here and there. Um, but I just, I just had uh, understood you're going, you're webcasting to uh, all of these art teachers around the world. And I want to say hello to all you art teachers. You guys are my kindred spirits. You're my peeps, man. <laughs> keep keep up the keep up the good work. I know it's a 
it's a battle out there to keep the arts in the schools, to it keep the is. arts in the curriculum. I know yes. to, to to jam art into the STEM, mm. you know, it's like it's getting to be more and more common for to be have STEAM, right? Yes. Science, technology, um, a design, uh, uh, yes, yeah, uh, uh, um, engineering, art, talking all day. <laughs> I've been teaching all day long, five hours. So I've been doing the summer camp. Um, I'm in this uh, museum. I'm in a beautiful uh, museum uh, here, the auditorium. We have about a hundred families involved, and uh, I just I love teaching. Uh, still, I mean, I've been teaching for what forty five years now, and I that's my happy place is when I'm teaching live. Um, I uh, uh, am able to this. Uh, yeah, I travel and during the school year. I I visit uh, visit probably about a hundred different schools here around you know uh, usually the United States but I've been over to Europe and Australia and India and uh, uh, United Air, uh, Emirates um, lots lots of wonderful schools internet Brazil uh, Spain um, lots of wonderful school assemblies so if you uh, teachers out there want me to come to your school I that's I love to come to schools and do live you know programs with 500 kids the whole idea is for that I love to inspire the kids like I did with Miss Artastic yeah. to pursue <laughs> their passion for the visual arts. Um, I've had uh, a lot of my students from the past, from the 80s and 90s, um, they uh, worked on movies. So I've had some of my students worked on Frozen, oh. uh, Lucasfilms, BB-8, Kung Fu Panda, Toy Story, uh, WALL-E. It's just exciting to see that um, my passion has been able to inspire a whole, you know, several generations of uh, illustrators and animators and, and comic book designers. So that's exciting. That's very rewarding, very validating. And that movie that that you saw, The Secret Seal, here, I'll hold that up. Yeah, that's, absolutely. I have a... Uh, uh, here. Who's oh, that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's just such a bizarre picture, but the director liked it. It's awesome. I think it's great. But, uh, I don't know. It's surreal. I, it's funny. It's so I look like uh, Santa Claus motorcycle guy. <laughs> so it's uh, called The Secret Cities of Mark Kistler. It's a, uh, it's a bi biopic. It's a biopic. Bio biopic. Uh, you know, biography, uh, documentary. We won the Docu best documentary at San Diego International Film Festival Comic Con, so that was exciting, and um, it's uh, it's out there available for everybody who wants to see it right now. They c everybody can download from Apple uh, TV, or they can download from uh, Prime Video or from Google Plus. Okay, perfect. Now for a li limited time, it's on Tubi, T U B I okay. yep. com. Uh, I'm not sure how long it'll be on there, but that's, that's free with commercials. So we can yeah. check that out, but, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks for, for watching that. I know you, you took a look at it and, um, it was a, a three year project where before wow. the pandemic, I got a, an email from a, uh, old viewer, old, old fan who was working as an art director for Lord of the Rings down in Australia. He, uh, he, he sent me an email saying, Oh, you know, I grew up watching your show and it inspired me. I'm now an art director. And, uh, you know, I, I see you've done imagination station, the secret city, the draw squad, you've written a bunch of books now. And I'd like to, to create a documentary, a bio biopic about your career. And I, would you be interested? And I was sure. I mean, how that's, uh, I'm honored, but I mean, really, do you, do you uh, think anybody would want to watch this? So we spent about, uh, of course, in the pandemic hit. Yes. And so we spent uh, two extra years uh, on uh, Zooming and interviews. And what was exciting is we pulled in uh, interviewing uh Old students, fans, old students who grew up with the shows of Secret City of in, from the 80s, from 85 to 95, it was a Secret City, 65 half-hour 
public television shows that were uh, aired around the world, but mostly in the United States. Uh, and then from 1996 to 2009, we did another series called Imagination Station. Uh, both of them were, were based on teaching drawing skill, the joy of drawing, inspiring folks to draw. We actually won the Emmy, which is woo, for uh, the cool. Imagination Station. And in between that, we did a short little run of a series called The Draw Squad. And um, uh, for the so the movie, we were able to pull in viewers from the different time periods that the different TV series impacted viewers. And so we had uh, 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 we had Jack Moore uh, in the movie. He's uh, um, was a young viewer down in Texas. He's growing up. He's he's now a big. Uh, big wig, important uh, art artist for NASA. He works That's for NASA. That's so cool. <laughs> and I, in fact, just last weekend, I flew out and I did a, a special workshop with him and uh, a, another fellow uh, NASA artist at the uh, Houston Comic Con, Comic Palooza. We had big. Uh, we did the right in front of their Moon Rover display and their spacesuit display. We were right there, and we did a a, a question and answer in a panel and I taught the folks how to draw the XEMU um, spacesuit which is really cool that is so cool that was live and I was talking with Jack Moore and some artists and uh, there's the engineers and scientists and what that was based on was during the pandemic I know I'm going in different directions but I'll oh, come back to the movie but <laughs> the um uh, for, during the pandemic, Jack Moore had reached out to me from, you know, the, my NASA friend that to do a series called Draw Artemis, a live YouTube based Zoom uh, OBS, uh, you, you know, to multiple channels and multiple guests. And we did. So we did ended up doing eight episodes so each month. We did a one hour episode live on YouTube and it's still on YouTube. You can go to my Mark Kistler uh, YouTube channel. And go to playlist and go to the draw Artemis, draw NASA, and so we uh, each show, each episode, we did we picked different components of the Artemis program, the mission to the moon, then to Mars. Uh, one of the episodes was the Orion spacecraft. We drew the Orion. One of them was the SLS rocket that took off. One of them was the launch pad. One of them was the uh, XEMU, which is the spacesuit. That they explore it. They, they, I don't know what it stands for, but it's, it's exploration outside the spacecraft, the moon suit. Yeah. And um, just had a wonderful time. Eight. And uh, during this, I would do the drawing lesson, and the Jack and Patricia, his wife, with the director, she's uh, the uh, national NASA education. She's just wonderful. But they they uh, mediated and had conversation with astronauts and engineers and NASA scientists um, at Kennedy uh, NASA Kennedy Space Center, Center and Houston Control wow. um, and um, uh, Johnson Space Center. So we were, and it was all Zoom because, you know, the pandemic. So we would have my window drawing and then we'd have Jack's face and Patricia. Then we had as, always had a featured special guest artist. We had guest artists, one per eight hours from all over the country. It was great. Then we had astronauts and engineers and scientists on there. So it's a really, really fun hour. We packed a lot of information and lots. Of, I think you'll enjoy. Here's one episode. And, uh, and if your teacher is watching an episode, um, I will reward them by sending them the e, uh, an email. I'll send them this. This is uh, one image. Uh, that is. Oh, wow. See that? That's that. This is a 11 by 17 poster. And that's the Orion spacecraft. That's a one-hour episode right in the middle there. Isn't that fun? Can <laughs> you see so that? Fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. So if anybody, if any of your viewers want to, want to, they watch an episode of my YouTube, the Draw Artemis, show it with your kids. Show it to your class. I think your kids will enjoy it. They can draw along. I'll send you a, a digital a, a PDF, and you can print it up for your kids. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a good way to integrate even science with art, right? You can, ex you know, extend into that in lots of different ways into the in the curriculum too. Bringing well, well, all yeah, the science. Was, uh, it, what, what, what the the underlying theme, the important uh, issue thing we're trying to trying to really push and pr 
and stress was how important the visual arts are to mm-hmm. science, to NASA. This, the, the artist at NASA, the, uh, NASA has lots of artists that work there. And the whole point of the artist is to convey the, from the engineers and the scientists and the, um, act, you know, all the, that the, the mathematicians and all that in for dry information, but it's critical to get us to the moon. Right. Mm-hmm. But to convey all that through their art, through creativity, through imagination, the sense of awe and wonder and splendor of human spaceflight exploration to, to public. So they, to, they, they're able to take all this information and their connections with these engineers and scientists and mathematicians. And then they do these incredible. So anything that you see with the, uh, uh, you know, the planets and the spacecraft and the animation, it's all from the NASA artists. And it really helps us understand what they're, what, what these guys are shooting for. Um, Jack Moore was, was one of the guests on the movie of the, and he was a well co co star because he was interviewed on, uh, during the movie. It was really cool talking about his early childhood experience of watching me on the the TV show. He's really articulate. He did a great job. And then uh, Robert Newstead, my executive producer, co creator of Imagination Station, he was uh, uh, he helped narrate the whole thing. He he was uh-huh. on quite often. He did great. He's a good friend of mine up here in Chicago. I just was at his, him and his wife this week and uh, good friends. Uh, Joel Gorey, my co-star, the robot of the Secret City, uh, Zebtron. And he also yeah. played Cindy the Dragon, the dragon. <laughs> uh, he yeah. lives in Pennsylvania. And he and I, he's, he, he's 78 now and I'm 60. But when I was 19, we did the show and he was 30. So we've been dear friends for 40 years. And he was in. The, he's in the movie, and he did a, an amazing job. All these people, they just so, so engaging and so articulate and smart. They just uh, it made me look so good. And it was beautiful. Yeah, it just made. Uh, it just makes me so proud to be in that the same circle of these guys. You know, you sure have uh, enthusiastic fingernails. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good on camera. I always do neons. <laughs> Let me see, go like this, go, ah, yeah, that's cool. So we had, uh, we also had uh, Dan, uh, Dan Fraga, Fraga, Dan Fraga, I always say Fraga. And Dan Fraga was uh, a a really important key uh, illustrator, uh, comic book artist for Image Comics. He worked on Silver Surfer, he worked on Batman, Spider-Man. He worked on so many comic books that we all grew up with and loved. And he did a great job. You saw him on the movie, right? Yes. The, the handsome bald guy, very smart. And he was told about his his journey of drawing with me and then getting inspired, becoming a the top notch comic book designer and illustrator. I mean, a, just a legend in the comic book world. We had Doug Devore, the the director of the Imagination Station. That was a real treat. So we had all these different personalities, and the uh, we had. The co-star of the Secret City, the creator of co-creator of Imagination Station, the director of Imagination Station, and uh, we had one of the uh, cast members, uh, Cynthia uh, Ernstein. Her, her name was Cynthia Kahn back when she was fourteen, um, but here she is, you know, in her in her forties now, and she was a, a club member. She was in charge of all the kids that are on the TV show. So that was a treat to have her wow. at the filming and to be able to see her after 40 years, you know, totally. Uh, That's amazing. As, uh, here we're both grandparents now, you know? Yeah. And um, we had Tim Decker, uh, which is just, uh, he's, he, he, since he was a guest host, guest star on uh, imagination station, uh, I don't know, 25 years ago, he was the guest, one guest we had come back uh, 17 times in the course of 100 and something episodes. The most 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 return of any guest we had, uh, he returned, um, you know, evolved into a very, very uh, dear, important friendship for both Robert Newstead and I and Tim. And um, he's uh, he's in the movie. It's just he's just an amazing fellow. Um, so and I'm, uh, I'm I think I'm just don't want to miss anybody here. Uh, I sure hope I don't miss anybody. That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I cover. It. I think I. But anyways, having all these, these, uh, I'm going through the list here in my head. 
So the creator, the director of the movie, uh, Cor- uh, the, the founder of Corrigan Pictures, uh, uh, Jason Brown, uh, did a wonderful job, and uh, it was it was his vision. You know, I just uh, you know was uh, facilitated with the interviewing and with bringing in all these different talented, articulate people, and hopefully, uh, you found the movie to be interesting and and um, worthwhile. Oh, well, absolutely. So I'm going to say it's interesting. It's all about me, right? It's yeah. so surreal. I saw the I saw the movie uh, the premiere at the San Diego Comic Con International Film Festival, and that was surreal. Seeing my face, you know, that big. See that th- I'm in a yeah. theater now teaching, and this having my face so big it was wild. I enjoyed the New York premiere. That was really fun. Uh, right there in, in Manhattan. At the the big theater right there, on, I can't remember one major made avenue. It was really exciting. Yeah, I got to go in there and I met some some old friends and New York fans, and we went and saw the movie. Wow! And, and you know, being in New York, that was wonderful. And then I now must... to see it all streaming. So yeah, it must be really surreal, even just seeing the impact that your work and uh your lessons has had on so many people too, just that the amount, the mass amount of people that your reach has gone, right? And over so many generations, that must have just been totally a surreal moment, right? Well, thank you so much. I just, I, I, you could, you know, you are a teacher, so you know, you can yeah. never get validated enough. It's always like, yeah, what? You really like me? You like me? You like me? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my teaching, you remember it, it made an impact wonderful i mean i just that's how that you know that keeps us motivated it Mm -hmm. keeps us inspired yeah especially i find especially when you're doing like youtube or even doing the television show you don't necessarily see all your audience so to know that you actually did reach all those people i think it's just even through that medium i know you do other things as well but just having gotten that reach and yeah well thank you for acknowledging all the different uh projects i have going and um I do. I do a lot of lives. I uh, I try to, for every year. I start off on New Year's Day. Go, I'm going to do a, a, a drawing a day live for the whole year. One year I made it 199 days in a row. One year That's I made it, you know 80. Yeah. This year I went uh, about 85 days. Yes. And uh, you know life happens, right? And oh, so yeah. so then. I think I'm on, uh, but I'm still, the whole point, what I'm doing now in 2004 is every year I have a, you know, theme. So this year's theme was draw more in 2004. Oh, I and like it. I'm challenging any viewers. I, ha- I have, uh, I usually have um, anywhere from 600 to a couple thousand folks that will watch the posting. I usually have, I don't know, a dozen or, to, you know, 50 live. Uh, people are walking by and they're dressed really funny. <laughs> uh, distracted me, squirrel. <laughs> so, so I uh, I made it about 90, 90 days of two thousand four, and mm-hmm. I, I made the commitment on January first, two thousand four, that I'm going to see how many days I can draw in total, the the big picture. Yes. And I'm not like every other year I go and then I get so disappointed when I miss a day and I just give up. Oh, and I, I, you know, I do 199 days. I miss a day. And it's, uh, that's, so I, that's, Game that's, over. <laughs> so this year, it's just like, you know what? Even if I get half, yes. even if I miss six months of the year, uh, it's still 180 days. I'm trying to stress the big picture. I've had, I have viewers that are on day number 160. They, they keep drawing every day, even when I wow. miss. Some of these viewers have created uh, a Facebook group page wow. called Marcus or Live. And now it's got, I don't know, several hundred members. It keeps building. And they post their drawings and they Aww. they uh, they wanted me to, uh, you know, administer it. And I said, no, this is great. It's, it's fan created, fan administered. I'll come in and give you hearts and thumbs up and stuff. But it's it's you guys. uh you guys run with it. I think it's great, you know? Yeah, that's so and cute. So, so that's that's really neat. I like that. So yeah. Kathleen, it so Kathleen, it's just it's so exciting to talk with you having this podcast out to art educators and 
uh, inspired uh, artist out there and to uh, be able to share it, you know, with kindred spirits, my passion and my joy for the visual arts. Yeah, I agree. So um, let me go up here because um, you covered a lot of my questions. <laughs> I got other ones. I told You're good you, at that. I, told you. I just, I just go. Like, you, you, okay. you predicted it. You're like, I know, oh, I know where this is going. Um, but yeah, twenty five minutes. All right. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Um, I and you talked about a little bit about um, just the whole art education, um, and that it's been a lot of pushback. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, I'll, uh, you talked a little bit about how our education. Um, in schools, there's a lot of defunding kind of happening. Um, they're even getting to the point where sometimes the art classes are disappearing or it's not included as much. Um, and even sometimes art teacher positions altogether are disappearing. And I know that you and me both strongly believe in the importance of art education, especially for kids and giving them an outlet to express their human condition and their emotions and being able to get their ideas out there and communicate visually with others. And maybe um, you could speak a little bit towards the decision makers, if you could, um, what would you say to them in terms of how this is maybe impacting people who are creative? Like for me, I feel like it suffocates me when I don't have a creative outlet and I can't imagine how painful sometimes that could be for kids. So maybe you could talk about a little bit about the importance of maintaining our education. Well, yeah. Um, you, I, and your viewers yes. were, you know, all in that, uh, the, the correct school of thought that the visual arts are, are imperative are critical to help processing of information. The whole point of education is to uh, prepare students to be able to think and solve problems and be mm -hmm. able to communicate what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and what the visual arts do, what especially drawing does, it helps the student um, communicate uh, what, you know, what they're thinking, solving problems in, in the 3D, not just the uh, linear and two dimensions. Uh, visual arts tie into geography, to history, to um, um, social studies to mathematics, I mean, to calculus, to, to planetary orbits. It all ties into visual arts can, can put a tangible result from this, from this uh, information that you're learning. Why, why are you learning this information? Well, here's the applied calculus. Here's the applied social studies. Here's, here's the uh, um, geography. Here's, here's uh different countries flag. Here's different countries capitals here's the what famous bridges mountains uh, here's musical instruments from around the world uh, you know it just you can tie the visual arts are, are this wonderful thread that that this creates this tapestry of knowledge and experience and adventure for these kids mm -hmm. so it just uh it underlines the fundamental uh truth that we all visual art teachers uh believe that uh Artist is pivotal, artist critical, artist central, and the STEAM goal of science, technology, engineering, art, and math, how they're all important. Science, technology, engineering, and math are, are good, noble, important pursuits for humankind. But you can't do anything with all this information without the power of creativity, without the power of imagination, right? I Absolutely. mean, Einstein, Einstein, right? The mathematician of the world said that, you know, imagination is more important than knowledge. And I, I agree with that. And also, I'm, I, I'm a big supporter and believer in how, how critical it is to have certified art educators in the schools. Um, what's happening so often in the schools is the art gets passed off to the classroom teachers, which, yes. you know, they're already inundated. Their plates are full. They're trying to cover all the curriculum. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, you're going to teach art once a week for 40 minutes. And here's your cook. Here's some crafts to do. Yes. You know, here's, you know, here's some puppetry to do with paper rolls or something. And you know, it's admirable. I mean, you know, admire that they're, they're they're solid efforts. But we all we really need to get certified art teachers in the elementary level, junior high level, and the high school level. There's so many elementary schools that without an art program in the United States, and it's it's been a never-ending campaign. 
it's 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 been a forty year campaign to keep the arts in in the school or reintroduce them to the school or try to try to you know get the school districts to to bring back the visual arts. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it's kind of disheartening seeing how over time like you, I thought in my head when I started off it's like oh we're gonna make it more but it's just every year I see more and more art teachers that I know or that listen to my show or read my blog losing their positions and I'm like oh, it's so sad it's so, and disheartening it, it, it's it's uh it's happened all over the world right I mean it's yeah. happened up in Canada as well as it the United is. States and it's been happening for 50 years mm-hmm. you know it's just uh yeah, it's just really sad the way because I just don't understand how the world's going to function without creative thinkers. <laughs> it's yeah, so well, important. <laughs> you see where it's going right now. Yes. It's so full of uh, bitterness and anger and yes. and and clashing and no, not solving yes. problems, not discussing, not just compromising. It's just yeah. clash, clash. And there's no, you got to think outside the box. You got to think creativity. You got to think co- collaboration, cooperation. You know. Yeah. And, uh, creatively pursuing and creatively achieving goals together. We're mm-hmm. all in this together, you know? Yep. Empathy for others. There's just so much that can be explored through creating art. It's not, it's just a universal language that explores one's ideas, one's emotions, and then also allows people to view that of others as well. And it's so important to do the creating, but also the viewing. And I think, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a sad place where we're at with all the clashes. It's very heightened emotions in the world right now um so in the documentary you talk about if the kids learn how to draw and if they get their ideas on paper they can learn to share their ideas with the world what made you want to teach kids and inspire them to draw and make art wow that's boy that's the that's the million dollar question that that they made a whole movie about that <laughs> well originally um, here, there you. There's my, there's my tie-in. Watch the movie. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, a great story of how I started when I was uh, 15 years old. I discovered that I, I mean, I always knew I loved to draw, but I did, I did a, a little after-school class for some local kids when I was in, I was high school, Parks and Recreation. You know, I had about mm-hmm. 10 kids, and I was 14 or 15. And I just loved it. I did uh, once a week. I did a little cartooning class. I taught drawing. I loved it. And the kids loved it. I soon had 20 kids. And and, uh, then I had two classes going. And then I had three classes. And then I had another city want me. So I had two cities going with multiple classes. And then pretty soon, within a year, I had 11 cities going. Wow. So I've always been very, uh, I guess, you know, entrepreneurial and wanting to... to, um, build things like this and i read i read a book so i read a book when i was uh i guess it was must have been 15 uh called think and grow rich and oh yeah the the napoleon hill (laughs) yes all about money money you know you got focus make money yes and i um I, i money wasn't really I wasn't obsessed about money, which I'm probably now at 60. I wish I would have been because that, you know, <laughs> it's a struggle, but I was uh, much, much more into the idea of what, what if I could teach a million kids how to draw? Wouldn't that be something? What if I could? So I set a goal to teach a million kids how to draw. And I started reading all the books, the Napoleon Hill's books and uh, um, magic of thinking big, the power of positive thinking, all those that was really big in the eighties. And just had a huge impact on me being able to realize that, hey, I could really harness this power inside me, this relentless pursuit of these goals, these dreams that can make them come true. And it took me many, many years uh, uh, to reach the goal. Um, But I set the goal to teach a million kids before I was 18. And uh, I missed that goal. I I started doing school assemblies. Here, this is what I pull us up again my promo school assemblies so your your viewers can see that right and yeah that's dare to draw I, right I was, so i was doing school assemblies to promote the parks and recreation class but then i realized wow look at i'm getting 600 700 800 kids at a time at school assembly so then i started going full time into school assemblies and i was doing several hundred schools a year and this is when i was 18 19 20 years old and I missed the goal. Uh, taught like six hundred thousand kids to draw before I was eighteen, but 
I was devastated. I missed my goal, you know, but I should you know, self-talk. All right. I'll recalibrate. I'll do it before I'm 21. I'll get the goal. So I kept going. And um, during the course of that, uh, that path, that journey, and this all, I tell the story in the movie, I uh, pursued the uh, video production thinking that would help me expand my base. And I, and I um, discovered that this, production company they were creating a children's art show mm -hmm. and i pretty much shoved my way into being the host of the show and uh <laughs> 20 years old i'm driving cross country in my little ford fiesta from from uh san diego california to new york city to uh host a national public television children's show on drawing and so uh when i turned 21 the 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 uh PBS show had been uh, aired for like, it started it was about a, three weeks into the run during the summer. Then we got to, you know, 12 million viewers or something. So it was very exciting, very exhilarating to, exhilarating to have realized that dream. That's amazing. That's absolutely good. Like totally impactful too. And just, it must've been, did you do anything like to celebrate that when you got that goal accomplished? Oh yeah. I mean, I was 21, of course. Oh, okay. you know? <laughs> You know, yeah. that's amazing so i um uh, i'm just having so much fun I uh, so uh because a lot of my te um, listeners are art teachers um or educators or studio instructors who teach to kids what advice would you give them in terms of exciting kids to draw and make art um and engaging them in the creative process so that they love making art just as much as you and i well i always uh but my my teacher, the fellow who inspired me the most when I was growing up, uh, Bruce McIntyre, he always taught by the idea that uh, kids will learn more from infection rather than injection by getting, you know, infected with enthusiasm and passion. So if if you art teachers and you art educators um, are able to share your enthusiasm, your joy, I mean, so drawing and painting and watercolor and airbrushing and sculpting it's just so joyful and such a good process and it's so therapeutic if you can convey that to the kids to the parents to the administrators i'd be able and and i think that's that's the most important part is to be able to to share your passion and your uh, uh joy of the visual arts with your students and that'll inspire them to carry it on through their lives Absolutely. I agree 100% with that. If you show up and you're just stone faced, no one's going to want to learn from you. <laughs> you got to really put it out there and, and get them excited. If you're excited, they're going to feel that too. Um, and can you tell us about um, any upcoming workshops or events that you have coming up or that you're excited about? Oh, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I have my website, which I okay. keep uh, posted of my activities at markkissler.com. The uh, my big big uh, news is I'm back live traveling all over the world, the the school assemblies. I love visiting elementary schools, and uh, folks can uh, see the movie. Ha, isn't that funny? I love it. <laughs> the movie, the uh, secret cities. On, you can see it on for a limited time on Tubi. Yes. Uh, go to my YouTube channel. Be sure to mm -hmm. subscribe. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, I guess you can put a link on your podcast. Yes, I will. I'll uh, have that. It'll give you a little a, a war alert when I go live. I go, when I have another, here you go. Live. I love it. I have, I use all these under the camera when I'm teaching. And uh, during the summer, not only do in-person summer camps like here at the Fort Wayne Art Museum, I do virtual art camps. Isn't that fun? That's oh, that is way. cool. See these virtual, see different. These are all on my website, but Perfect. different colors for the different weeks. Oh. And I have, I have uh, several more of these this summer and I'll do, I'll do them every summer. And the whole point to what I'm trying to do is get the kids and the, a lot of parents. I have a lot of parents that sit in here too. Oh, I'm sure. Is, uh, get them to have the skill and the confidence to be able to take their ideas and draw in 3d, you know, Everybody mm -hmm. can draw a good, a good. Here I have this graphic of uh, lots of 3D. See, everybody can draw that house and that flat house. That's a good house. 
that's a good house. It's effectively communicating uh, what a house is. That's that wins at Pictionary, right? But yes. I lo I lost all my games at Pictionary because I would always draw a house like that. It takes too much time. <laughs> but I want to give folks this is a good house. It does it tells exactly what art is about. Show people what things are look like and what they're uh, uh, what you're talking about, what you're thinking. But I want to give folks the skill and the confidence to draw 3D flat to a delicious 3D donut. Okay. It's beautiful. So that's and, uh, go ahead. Um, yeah. So your drawing style, since you're talking about it and the way um, of teaching your drawing style and your way of teaching really focuses on cartooning, specifically drawing and cartooning three-dimensional styled artworks. Can you talk about how that style of our drawing came to be and perhaps why you chose it as your vessel for teaching kids learn to learn how to draw? Well, sure, yeah. It's just always been my... I have always loved cartooning. Dr. Seuss, Gary Larson, yes. The Far Side, Bill Watterson, Calvin and Hobbes. <clears throat> Lynn Johnston, the comp for better or for worse, Susie Spafford from Susie Sue. Just, uh, I just have always, I just have always loved um, uh, illustrated comics. And, and so I would copy them, I'd trace them. My earliest memories are copying and tracing the Flintstones uh, because I just love Flintstones. And I would, uh, I was, uh, I was going to become a, uh, my goal when I was seven, eight years old, I was going to become an animator with Hanna Barbera, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, th th uh, that was what I, I love cartooning. I love that that style. So, I was able to use that my that uh, my my joy of that, my skill of that, to teach the kids to. to <laughs> I hope I'm making sense. But oh, that, absolutely. That's what. What I enjoy, so I was able to use that to get the kids excited about drawing. Now, if I was into watercolor, I would use that. If I, yeah. if I was, you know, get excited about uh, colored pencils or airbrushing, whatever, whatever the teacher is excited, you know, passionate about, that's the vehicle. That's the mode that you use to, to get the kids excited. And it really doesn't matter what medium you're using, uh, as long as the kids uh, get get caught up and get infected with that passion for art, for visual drawing. And, um, and just like, I, I, yeah, just you either get caught up in it. And then also they want to start creating because they're so excited because you're passionate and that, that uh, excitement becomes contagious really. Well, I, I so enjoy your time. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much Kathleen, for coming. I so enjoyed being a, a guest on your show and I hope all your, your art, uh, educators and your inspired art teachers out there uh take a moment may check out my movie i think yes. that perhaps they'll find it interesting i hope absolutely and, uh, check out my website and check out my youtube lives got lots of books out there i've written 20 books uh there's uh, over a million books yeah there's one of them there's one of them <laughs> look how young i was look, how, look at that was i ever that young and i love the jacket <laughs> I remember you talking about that in the documentary. It was lovely. <laughs> so thank you so much for spending your time. And uh, I hope to be up in Canada one time and uh, maybe I can cross paths with you. Come yeah. on to a school. We can go to a, some elementary schools up there. That would be fabulous. And is, is there any possibility of a reboot for you? Uh, pardon me? Is there any possibility of a reboot of Mark a Kistler? Oh, uh, a reboot of Marquesa. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream right now. I'm going Perfect. live. I'm doing, uh, I'm writing more books and I'm doing my in-person program. So I can't imagine it getting even any more busy and exciting than it is right now. That's perfect. Thank you so much for coming on. I truly appreciate you taking the time to speak to everybody today. And I am so excited. I was looking really forward to talking with you. So well, thank you. Bucket list. You. <laughs> you have a lovely bye day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, that is it for the interview with Mark Kistler. I have listed down below in the description of the video and description of the podcast, the links to his website, the links to um, the Apple TV 
documentary as well as the Prime video documentary as well as you can also try find the documentary on Blu-ray if you look on Amazon. I did see it there as well as all of his books are on Amazon as well. I've also linked to um, his website, his school assemblies um, and more and his YouTube channel all in the description of the video. So make sure you check out the description of the video to find all the different links as well please make sure you subscribe to this youtube channel and be sure to like this video so others can also check out this interview and get inspired by mark kistler and your question of the day please leave your answer in the comments of the video is to share what you loved about the interview if you have any questions or if you want to talk about how mark kistler's journey has inspired you please make sure you leave those uh, those comments in the description of the video or you can answer as a question if you're listening on spot um, on Spotify podcast player and be sure to share this with friends share the video uh, with your friends share it to Facebook um, email it to your friends um, if you know someone who'd love this interview who maybe is another fellow art lover another art educator um, art education um, Facebook groups please share it out um, and then if you uh, get inspired and create something inspired by the interview or his style of, of drawing uh, share it on social media and use a hashtag hashtag Ms. Artastic and hashtag Mark Kistler so that way we can see your amazing creations and then also share them with our communities all right, my friend, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this interview just as much as me. And be sure to watch The Secret Cities of Mark Kistler, the full documentary. Bye for now.